All right, I've been asked to do an example on how to calculate principal stresses and rotation angles from Mohr's circle. So here's that example. I've got a, sh a uh, stress element with 100 megapascals on the x face, 50 megapascals on the y face, and 25 megapascals shear f a stress on the x face. Remember, these are both normal stresses. This is tau xy, shear on the x face in the y direction. And equal and opposite up here is tau yx, which is shear in the y face in the x direction. These have to be equal and opposite so that they, uh, you don't have a net moment on your stress element. And I made a stress element. I've spared every expense on this. Stress element, think of this as a sensor. Okay, I've stuck it maybe to the wall here, the wall of this building, and there's a whole building above me. So there's plenty of stresses in this wall, say. Well, I'm going to line the stress element up, probably, with the x and y axes I've chosen for convenience. There's no reason to think that the, that the uh, stresses in that you know, arbitrary x, y direction are the maximum or minimum stresses. It's very reasonable to think I'd have to rotate this in order to see those. That's what Moore's circle tells us. Moore's circle is drawn on stress axes. That is normal stress and shear stress, tau x, y. The reason we do this is that Moore noticed that when he wrote the equations that show how to transform stress with direction, if you plotted them on this axis, you got a circle. All right. If you know radius and the center location of a circle, you know everything there is to know about a circle. That's what we're doing here. All righty. So let's plot everything from the x face right there, and then everything from the y face. X face, we've got 100 megapascals in the uh, normal stress direction, so that's 25, 50, 75, 100, right there, and 25 megapascals in the shear stress direction, right there. So that's data from the x face. I'm going to do the same thing down here with the y face. I'm going to go over 50 megapascals in the normal stress direction, and then minus 25 in the shear stress direction. So there's data from the y face. X phase, Y phase, there's my coordinate system. Now, I know that these are uh, opposite points on a circle. The line that goes between them is a diameter. It goes through the center. So I'm going to sketch that in there. And I'm sketching here, guys. If this doesn't come out to be a circle, hey, I'm doing my best. All right, so now I know where the center is. Since that is 50 and that's 75, the center is in the middle of that. So sigma bar equals sigma x plus sigma y over 2, and that's, um, sorry, 75 megapascals. Okay, so that's where this is. That's 75. Right. Now, last thing I need to know is the radius. Well, this is a right triangle, and the hypotenuse of that right triangle is the radius. Well, I already know that that side of the triangle, that leg is 25 megapascals, and this leg is 25 megapascals. Put the units in there. Track your units, because the dis that's 100, the mean is at 75, that must be 25, and I already knew that tau xy is 25. So, I know that the radius is 25 squared plus 25 squared, and that's going to equal 35.355 megapascals. All right? So I know the center, and I know the radius. I know everything there is to know about a circle. So let's sketch this in here. And I, oftentimes, I'll only draw two quadrants in the circle because it makes it look a little less. Here, I'll fill it in. I'll show you why. When I fill it in like this, it's pretty obvious that I've drawn kind of a flat, squashy circle. And I'm doing my best. All right, this distance right here is tau max, the maximum shear stress that exists at that position. Well, tau max is also the radius. Great. The next thing I need to know is what's the maximum stress that appears here? Well, that's the point right there. That's either sigma 1 or sigma 
called the max, right, depending on what you want to call it. The maximum normal stress. Well, I know that that's, that position right there is the center of the circle. So on this axis, that's sigma bar. And that distance right there is the radius. So sigma 1 equals sigma max. And that equals sigma bar plus the radius. So that's 75 MPa plus 35.355 MPa. And that's going to be 110 point. I'll round that up to 36. I normally work to five significant figures in these examples. So there you go. There's sigma 1. Now, let's try to put sigma 2 down here. Sigma 2 is that, okay? The minimum normal stress that exists at this point. Well, that's pretty obviously sigma bar minus the radius. And that turns out to be 75 MPa. I'm going to erase some stuff here because I have a very small board to work with. 35.355 and that works out to be 39.645 MPa. So your principal stresses are sigma max equals your radius, 35.355. Sigma 1 equals sigma max, that's 110.36 MPa. Sigma 2 is the minimum normal, or normal stress, and that's 39.645. Last thing we need to know is rotation angles. All right, right there, Moore decided to call that 2 phi. All right. Now why 2? Well remember, these are stress axes, they're not geometric axes and you're trying to pull something geometric from them. It shouldn't be too surprising that that isn't exactly the rotation. That should be scaled somehow, and it is. All right, remember that right triangle there has two known sides and a 90 degree angle in the middle, so we should be able to figure out that angle, two phi, without too much trouble. And we can. Okay, I'm going to erase this here, and maybe some of that. <coughs> So 2 phi has to be the inverse tangent of that distance divided by that distance. Well, in this one example, they're equal to each other, so that's easy. So that means that's 45 degrees. That means phi equals 22.5 degrees, and that's in the clockwise direction. Okay, that's important. What that means is, I take my handy dandy stress element here, stick it on the wall somewhere, right there, I've got it lined up with some co coordinate system I chose just for convenience. If I rotate that, a, that radius down to the horizontal axis, it's rotating counterclockwise. If I rotate this counterclockwise 22 and a half degrees, that means that the stress element is now lined up so that the X face, that face right there, sees the maximum normal stress. Now, if that's 45 degrees, 2 phi prime has to also equal 45 degrees. So phi prime is going to be 22.5 degrees counterclockwise. Now, this isn't generally true. Remember, these numbers correspond only to this example. That means if I take my stress element and rotate it 22 and a half degrees counterclockwise, that now the X face, this face right here, will see the maximum shear stress, tau max, which was, uh, let's see what we said that was, 35.355 megapascals. So there you go.